to see it. But as we keep saying, don't look directly at the sun. You'll damage your eyes. The best way to see the transit is go, to go to one of the many events being held around the country, like this one here in Greenwich, in the courtyard of the Royal Observatory. All the events will have experienced astronomers to show you how to get a perfect view. And there's a full list on the website, open2.net. Now, here are five things you should know about transits of Venus to impress your friends down the pub. One, don't look directly at the sun. I know we keep saying that, but it's very, very important. Two, transits of Venus are rare because Venus's orbit is at an angle to the Earth's, so they line up only every 120 years or so. Then you get two in the space of eight years. So, the next one will be 2012, then no more till 2117. Three, only five have ever been seen by human eyes because no one knew they happened until scientists worked out the orbits of the planets and the telescope was invented. The first person to see one was an amateur astronomer called Jeremiah Horrocks in 1639. Four, Captain James Cook maps New Zealand and Australia as an afterthought. The real purpose of his famous first voyage in the Endeavour was to observe the 1769 transit of Venus from Tahiti. Five, transits of Venus were important historically because they were the only way to measure accurately the distance to the Sun. And knowing that meant you could work out all sorts of other stuff, like the distance to Jupiter, how bright the Sun was, and even how far away all the other stars were. That stirring music was, of course, the Transit of Venus March, composed by John Philip Sousa, specially for the 1882 transit. Now, there's tremendous excitement and huge crowds here at Greenwich today. What's brought you here, madam? I'm an open university science student, believe it or not, and I've been studying the solar system. So this is your practical? This is, yeah. <laughs> I think it was really, really moving. And how about you? Well, I was very practical in as much as I got up at half past three to be here. Wow, you look as fresh as a daisy. <laughs> And here we've got some rather smart people. This is Samuel West. You're taking time off from acting, yes? I am. Keen amateur astronomer. You are? Yeah. Terrific. Amazing to think how far we've come since the last one. But you know, what I'm really looking forward to is somebody being on Mars for the transit of Earth in 2073. <laughs> well, I'm not sure that either you or I are going to be around then. <laughs> That's brilliant. Thank you. And here we have Dick and Do Do Dom and Dick. Oh, Dick. Dick. Oh, yeah, Dick. Oh, yes, yes, Hi. Dick. Are you astronomers? Uh, well, we're not. Doggies. We're looking through the solar scope, and there's a lovely picture yeah, of the sun nice, being reflected, right? but there's a little yeah. black dot on it which yeah, we can't seem to get, to get off. Black black dot. Dot. Oh, yeah. yes, yes. Oh, that'll be Venus. Tipex. Oh, that's it. Oh, it's Venus. Oh, is it? That'll explain what silly of us. We've got it, we've got it. Thanks, Chaps, that's great. And this is John, and you're a physicist, you know about these things. That's right, yes. I've got a very simple setup here, just a video camera with a lens on it. What's really nice about this is it's proving you can do science very simply in your back garden. You don't need this fancy equipment we've got behind us, you can just do it at home. But you have got a filter on the front. I have, yes. That's very important, right. So, because transits are spaced more than a century apart, the way they're recorded for posterity changes every time. In the 18th century, Captain Cook and his companions had to draw what they saw. The transits of the 19th century benefit from the invention of photography. This amazing movie was put together recently from photos taken then. Today's transit is also being watched with the latest technology. And Lucy Green is up in our computer room checking out some of the images. Lucy. Thanks, Adam. Well, I'm joined up here in the computer room by Michael from the Open University, and I have to say that the images are flooding in. Michael, what have you got to show us? We've had some brilliant images coming through already. Um, one that I particularly like is this animation that's come through from the Trace uh, telescope in space. Right, so this is a telescope in orbit around the Earth, so this is really making use of the new technology. And we see there's no sign of the black drop effect there, actually. That was really beautiful. Anything else? Absolutely. This is from a telescope in Austria. That's amazing. So this is taken through a different filter, hydrogen alpha filter. That's absolutely amazing. Thank you very much. Back to you, Adam. Thanks, Lucy. If you can't manage to get into space today, well, the next place to observe from is Egypt, which is pretty much guaranteed good weather, which is why a lot of enthusiasts have gone there on transit of Venus holidays. Among them... The Royal Observatory in Greenwich for the last live look at the transit of Venus here on BBC One with Adam Hart Davis. Welcome back to the Royal Observatory at Greenwich and the 2004 Transit of Venus. And we've been looking at some fantastic images of the transit. Not long to go now, and we're just coming up to the most important moment, the so-called third contact, where we're going to attempt to measure the distance to the sun. 
and Open University astronomer Andy Norton is here to explain how. Andy, how are we going to do it? Well, that's right. People have to measure when that third contact happens. They can put that into the website, and behind the scenes, it'll be combined with an accurate timing of the second contact, plus timings of the second and third contact from South Africa. Putting all those together, people will get back their own individual measurement of the distance from the Earth to the Sun. Oh, fantastic. You get your own measurement. You do. But it's going to be difficult. As we saw this morning at, at second contact, measuring just when that, that point of contact happens is very, very difficult. There's the black drop effect, the, the fuzzy edge of the Sun. It's going to be difficult. Right. So here's the edge of the Sun. It's when the planet just touches. When it just touches it, yeah. OK. Yeah. So what do you think people should do about the black drop? Well, what I would think is you can see when it's definitely not touching the edge on the inside and when it's definitely gone past, so maybe take the halfway point between, maybe that's going to help. I don't know. People are going to have to work out a way of doing it that gives the best result because we really want them to measure it to the nearest second, you know. Nearest <laughs> second? And but we do need a lot of people, We right? do, because some people will measure the time early, some people will measure the time late, but hopefully when we average all those together, we'll get a decent result at the end of it. Let's hope for it. OK, thanks very much. Now, once you've got a timing, you need to get it to us through the website. To explain what you do, here's Lucy in the computer room. Hi, Adam. Thanks for that. Well, I'm here looking at the website open2.net, joined by Michael from the Open University. Michael, how are the timings entered onto the website? It's very, very simple. All you need to do is click on the link Measure the AU, and straight away you'll be able to enter our interactive astronomical unit calculator. First thing you need to say is, are you working from the results coming from the TV? So that's our feed from Egypt. But right. for the sake of argument, let's say that you're one of the events around the UK. Enter your own observation okay. and click on the forward arrow. Right, so I see there's some timings here on the website. Does that mean you have to adjust your timings depending on where you are in the UK? Absolutely. So if you're in Scotland, for example, you might need to increase your timing, for example, to 22 seconds. Down in Cornwall, it's minus 12. Right, OK, and then you click the forward button and your result, you have to enter it there. Your it's hours. very simple. There's a box to type in the hours, there's a box to type in the minutes and a box for the seconds. That's great. And so our website will do all the fiendish maths for you. Back to Adam. Now, everybody here can join in. What we want you to do is to shout now at the exact moment you think Venus touches the edge of the sun. And up in the computer room, every time they hear a now, they'll type in the time. OK, everyone ready? Now, let's have a little practice. One, two, three. Nice. Yeah, they ought to hear that. <laughs> Terrific. OK, Andy, how's it getting on? Could we see Let's the picture up. from Egypt, please? There okay, we are. Oh, it's, hey, it's nearly there, isn't it? Very it's close. Very nearly there. But you can still see a little bright bit. Definitely. Let's, let's see how it looks here, shall and, we? Yes. Compare? Can we see the white light one from here? Again, okay. very close. That's, that's probably even very closer, close. isn't it? Right. What does it look like in Much Hall? Oh, well, we're having a fantastic time here in Much Hall, Adam, with everyone from professional astronomers and PhD students to school children from New Zealand to Tarleton, just up the road. What are you guys up to? We're just getting ready to measure the third contact. And how are you going to do that? We're going to be using stopwatches. Excellent. Well, we're coiled springs here in Much Hall. Back to you in Greenwich. Thanks very much. Now, what do you think, it's, Andy? It's, it's almost it's there, but very not close. Quite. Can we see the white light one, too? White light one. Oh, it's, it's, it's oh, almost there, it, isn't it's it? It's so difficult Any to say, isn't there. it? Uh, there's a, I reckon, is that black drop? I, it's Could it's be. very tiny. On the white the black light. drop. Yeah, on the white very light image tiny. from here. I reckon. I reckon it's about right. All you don't forget to shout now when you think it happens. Look on the big screen. Yeah. It could be any time well, now. I reckon there's still now. a little. Sliver of orange light on, on, the, on right the Egypt there. one. There's still a gap, but I, yes. I think the one from here. That's probably that's probably contact. Around are we about first? Now. Are we uh, first here? I think so. Yes, I think well, it's contact. Well, it does look like here. it. It does look like it. Yeah. Nobody said now yet, right? <laughs> but in Egypt, in I, Egypt, there's. It looks as though the edge of the sun's almost sort of bulging round. It doesn't, doesn't it? it? Sort of optical doesn't illusion. It? I reckon it's about now. We I haven't heard a single now from the crowd. Not one. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <laughs> we're getting them. Yes. I, I look there. It looks as though oh, it's it, kind it, of it's touching. There's contact a, there. A little river. There's a contact there. Yeah. Right. I think that's it. Right. Let's go it. over to Egypt. Paul, what's it like there? Well, we're 28 seconds behind you here, so we're going to get third contact any time now. As you can see, feverish activity despite the intense heat. Everybody's getting ready. Video, TV. People are drawing it just like Cook did. Getting ready. Back to you, Adam. That's wonderful. Well, I reckon we've got it. I reckon we've got first contact in Egypt. It and like cut, let's have a look at the telescope here. I think we've got first contact here. What's happening in Much Hall? <laughs> Frenzied activity. 
Yeah. Okay. I, okay. Oh, I, hey, look, it's got to be I finished. I think it's there. I think yes. the third contact okay, is there. Okay, Lucy, on the have you got any results in? Hi, Adam. We're just waiting for the first results to come in now. We've had quite a few images being sent to our website and people contacting the forum to discuss their results. We've got a couple of images here to show you. So the first one here, unfortunately, an observer had a bit of cloud there, but they're seen towards the end of the transit. And the next one, we've got a couple more images there. So it's looking really, really good. This is a lovely clear image showing no cloud at all. So we're just waiting for those first observations, the first timings to come in now. Back to you. Excellent. Well, we'll come back to you in a minute for, to try and get some results. It was much easier to see the third contact than the second, I wasn't it? I think it was Andy? much easier, it, yeah. It seemed to, I yeah. mean, we might have disagreed by a few seconds, <laughs> but it was much harder. It, was, it seemed easy to see when that contact ha actually happened, didn't it? Yes. They, they must be seeing that now in Egypt. Well, I would hope so. Can we go back to Egypt? Paul? That's funny. Hi. Well, I think this is, this is the image from Egypt, isn't it? And it looks as though they've, they've definitely had the third contact I think there. I think they must yeah, have had the first contact. Off. Now, let's see what our, our punters here think. OK, here's a couple of likely punters. Now, the sun's up there. No! So. Oh, we, we oh. missed it. We missed it. I'll tell you what, for the first time ever in our history, what? Dick and Dom have actually learned something. Do you know, we, we came here yeah. not knowing what to expect. We yeah. knew nothing about it, and uh, it's actually been really interesting. Yeah. Learned Fantastic. All about it. it is. It's a fascinating thing, isn't yeah. it? And as, anyone can do astronomy, you know, even yeah. me. Yeah, and that really well, is. Well, I'll tell you what we're gobsmacked by. The whole event was amazing, but the most amazing thing was seeing Brian May as an astrologer. It was incredible. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> Thanks, Lucy. Anyway, and we'll have the final value for the star date distance to our sun in the programme this evening on BBC Two at 11:20. Measuring transits has always involved dangerous expeditions to the ends of the Earth. None more perilous than the ones undertaken for the transit of 1761. Britain and France were at war, but both countries wanted to get the most accurate measurements because it would help their navigation. Today, we're recreating a little of that rivalry in our schools competition. Here's Vanessa to explain. St. Mary's School.